Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Catherine with The Perfect Place to Start and today I have a mega video for you showcasing some of my favorite Easter spring DIYs with one bonus DIY at the beginning for my lovely subscribers who have continued to be with me. So let's get started. For this DIY, we're going to take two of these candy cane wreaths that came from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to lay them in this kind of weird oval shape. I'm going to take some um, zip ties that were also from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to zip tie them in a couple different places to hold them together. This is going to be the base of my carrot. So I go ahead and do um, two down at the base and then two up at the top and you're going to see later in this uh, video that I end up having to put a couple more towards the top. See how my uh, wreath form is kind of sticking up out there or up at the top the um, candy cane tops are sticking out. We want those to be like as close to the other wreath form as possible so if you're recreating this save yourself that step ahead of time. So once I have all of the zip ties on I took this burlap that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and it was 50% off. You could also use um, some of the deco mesh and wrap out around the deco mesh so if you had extra from the Dollar Tree at like Christmas time or Halloween time you could use the orange from there or you could also get deco mesh from Hobby Lobby. I thought that the burlap gave it more of a farmhouse look so that's why I decided to go with the burlap. So I just start hot gluing it to my wreath form and wrapping and every time that the shape gets a little bit wider I found it to be easier to just cut the um, burlap and to then keep winding so at each point as it widens out I just cut and then glue it down to each other and then keep winding. So here we are at the end of one package of the burlap. I did wrap it around each other quite a bit of times just because I don't I didn't want the wreath form to uh, show through. So here I am um, securing more of those wreath forms together towards the top. What was happening is once I started to wrap the burlap around it was getting stuck at the corner and so um, anyway it just was a lot easier once I had it really much closer to each other on the wreath form. So like I said if you're going to recreate this make sure your zip ties are closing those in together to make one uniform shape. So I'm on to my second package of burlap and I'm just going to go ahead and start gluing again until I wrap it all the way to the top of this wreath form. Now that we have it all wrapped on there, I'm going to glue the end of my carrot down and I'm just taking some hot glue and squishing it down. Once I get the base glued together, I'm going to go up through the rest of the carrot and just randomly glue some of the um, wrapped around pieces down just to give it a little bit more security as far as the wrapping goes. Now we're ready for the top and I'm going to take three of these onion grass stems that I got at the Dollar Tree and another zip tie and I'm going to zip tie those three stems together. That way when I go ahead to like widen them out at the top, fluff them out I guess you would say, um, they're secured together and so they're giving it one stem. It looks like it's one stem. Once I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and stick it into where the opening is up here at the top into my wreath form and then I'm also going to secure it there with another zip tie. So when I go to zip tie this into the wreath form, I, I guess, accidentally 
zip tied it kind of off to the side. So make sure when you are doing that that you look at it before you zip tie it so you get you know an even shape. I was really okay with the off-centered part of it because it's supposed to be a carrot and not all carrots grow the same. So for me it was okay but if you're looking for like a total uniformity shape just make sure you double check that it's in the center. So once I have that zip tied into the wreath form, now I'm just going to gather this burlap up at the top to kind of give it um, the shape of the carrot. I do go ahead and take a piece of ribbon and tie it around the top to hold it in there. I originally was going to use a different ribbon and so I was tying a knot with that then I chose not to use that ribbon but I left the knot there. So um, just kind of to give it more security. You could also use twine here or jute rope. So once I have that all secured, glued together, and tied off, I'm ready to go ahead and do my bow. And this ribbon came from Walmart. This bow, all I did was crisscross it, take some twine, and I'm showing you that right here, tie it in the middle with a knot, and kind of fluff it out. A super easy bow if bows are not your thing. I would like to be a better bow maker, but I just... Um, I don't know maybe I'm just kind of an impatient crafter so <laughs> but anyway this bow is super easy to make and so you're just going to tie that and then we're going to glue it right there in the middle and then once we have that glued on I do go ahead and take some white grogain ribbon from Dollar Tree and glue a shoe lace bow in the middle of that and then this project is complete. I took these fence posts that I found in my yard and I just decided to glue them together. We're going for the shape of a bunny with the points being the bunny ears. I used some wood glue. It was the Tight Bond 3 wood glue and then I used these clamps that I got at Harbor Freight and I just clamped my wood pieces together and I let that dry overnight. I did have my husband kind of trim off the bottom of the fence post once they were all glued on. There was some spots where it was really um, like warped and you could see through and I didn't want that so he did go ahead and trim them for me on the bottom. Once I had that all ready, I took my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm just dry brushing onto the wood. I'm going for a rustic look so I don't want full coverage here, I want it to look weathered and so I'm okay if there's like heavier parts. Um, in some places than others and I want some of the wood to show through. I do go ahead and do in between the ears as well. This is the base of our project so I go ahead and do the same technique with the base. This piece of wood came from I believe Lowe's. It's like a darker colored wood. It was just some leftover wood that we had in our garage. So once I have those all painted, I'm going to take some twine from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut it in to uh, a small length. I didn't even really measure, I just kind of wanted to hang off a little bit of the fence post so I just that's how I measured it. And I put about five of the pieces on each side and then I glued a button in between for his nose. Once I have all three of the bunny figures finished, I go ahead and hot glue them to the base of our project, um, and I did use a generous amount of glue. You could use wood glue here too, I just chose to use the hot glue here. Once I have those all glued together, then I'm going to do uh, the base of the project. So I'm spelling out Easter here and I'm using the poster board stickers that they have at the Dollar Tree and I just go ahead and spell out Easter on the bottom. 
I want this to be a rustic weathered look, so I go ahead and take the white Waverly chalk paint and I dry brush over my letters to give them not such a harsh black color. Once I'm done with that, then I go ahead and take my Spanish moss and I glue on Spanish moss to the top of this uh, wooden piece that's our base. And then this project is complete. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Catherine with A Perfect Place to Start. I love to do seasonal decor, Dollar Tree DIYs, home decor, thrift to treasure. So if that is something that you're into, I would love it if you hit the subscribe button and became part of my YouTube family. For the next project, we're taking some of those same fence posts that I found out in my backyard. I had my husband trim them down to a more manageable size and then I took my orange Waverly chalk paint and I do, I'm just going to dry brush onto the pieces of wood. This gives it a weathered look as well and I'm not going for full coverage so if some of the wood is showing through then that is great. I like how when I dry brush it on there that all the carrots end up looking different. It just kind of depends on the texture of the fence posts and because they've been sitting out in my backyard they're weathered and it just gives it a really neat rustic look. So we're ready for the top of our carrots and I picked up my raffia at Walmart. I know that they do sell raffia at the Dollar Tree, my, or my Dollar Tree has been out of everything it seems like for a while so I wasn't able to find any there but I know you can um, get raffia there. So I just measure out a, an amount that I like for the top and then I cut that off and I set it aside and then I do that for three different bundles for each of the carrots. Once I have the bundles by the carrots I just take my hot glue and I kind of do this like I squish it down and then I put some more hot glue and I squish it down so it gives it kind of a fluffy like unruly kind of look I guess at the top and once I have them all uh, all the raffia glued on now I'm ready to just glue the carrots together to make the bunch of carrots so I take the two longer carrots and I glue them with my hot glue gun side by side and then I'm going to take that smaller carrot and I'm going to glue it on top so it gives me a bunch of carrots. We're ready to finish off the carrots and I picked up this ribbon in the Dollar Tree crafting area and I'm just going to wrap it tightly around a bunch of carrots and glue it in place. This tail of the ribbon I go ahead and fold over slightly so that the seam is more polished when we glue it on.
I'm ready to add a bow with that same ribbon into the middle of where I glued it together and I'm just kind of creating a simple bow that you pinch together and then I'm going to take some raffia, tie it in a shoelace bow and glue that to the middle of the burlap ribbon bow and then this project will be complete. For this project, I took one of those Dollar Tree shadow boxes and I gave it probably two or three coats of the white wavy chalk paint. Then I took my antique wax and a chippy brush and I just went over it really lightly to give it that nice antique look. Then I took one of these bunny cutouts from the Dollar Tree, it's one of those ornament packs and I'm just going to trace it onto a piece of paper. I'm making a reverse stencil here so once I get it traced on the paper I'm going to cut out the bunny but leave the background of the white there. That way I can use the inside of the bunny to paint onto my shadow box. For my bunny, I just used my Antique Waverly Wax and stenciled it into the reverse stencil that we just cut out. Now we're ready for a bow, so I'm just taking that same ribbon that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to make one of those crisscross bows. So I'm using this polka dot burlap ribbon and then I'm going to use just the white Grogain ribbon that also came from the Dollar Tree and then the striped farmhouse looking ribbon that also came from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to put one piece of each of those crisscrossed into the bow. Next I took some twine from the Dollar Tree and I just folded it over the bow and tied it really tightly in a knot to gather all of the ribbons together. Once it's all fastened together, I just go ahead and trim it. Uh, the smaller ribbon was a little bit too long, and so I just kind of trim it up to make it look a little bit more professional looking. You can always cut your ribbon too long and then trim it. When it's too short, you almost always have to like scrap it and start over. So make sure when you're cutting ribbon or doing bows, you always cut an extra amount. That way you don't have to start over. Now we're ready to attach the bow to the top of the sign and I just used my hot glue gun to do that and then I decided to take some more of that farmhouse ribbon and to add just a little bow to the bunny's neck.
I decided to take a little piece of that farmhouse ribbon and just cover up the middle where we tied it off with the jute twine just to give it more of a bow look. So we're going to start by taking some Spanish moss that I got at the Dollar Tree and this grapevine wreath that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and we're just going to stretch the Spanish moss about a fourth of the wreath. We are making this look like a nest so we're just kind of stretching and pulling and filling it out um, around that fourth of the wreath. I'm just using my hot glue gun and securing it in place as I go around and um, then I just go back in and add a little bit more to so some places where I thought it looked a little sparse. Then I'm going to take this garland that I got in the Easter section at Hobby Lobby. Um, I know that they do have like some plastic eggs at the Dollar Tree too that you could use in lieu of this garland. Um, I just cut the garland apart and then I'm going to go ahead and glue it um, onto the nest part and I just do a varying you know pattern with the bigger eggs and the smaller eggs. So we're ready to make the bow for the wreath and I'm going to try out this new technique that I saw. So we're going to make a tail of about 12 inches with the two pieces of ribbon that I planned on using. At the end of those 12 inches where the spools are, I'm going to lay my hand down and I'm going to start wrapping the ribbon around my hand. Um, when I was researching this bow method, it suggested that you put six loops around your hand. I don't quite make it the six loops because my polka dotted ribbon runs out of the spool. So I think I make it about five, five and a half um, turns around the ribbon. Once I have the ribbon all wound around my hand, um, I take my hand out of the loops and then I'm going to take a piece of wire and I'm going to tie off the back of the ribbon. Once I have the ribbon tied off in the back, then I'm going to go ahead and cut it from the blue spool that's still left and then I'm ready to fluff out the bow. When I start fluffing out my bow, I realize that I probably should have laid the polka dotted ribbon on the underside of the blue ribbon when I started wrapping it around my hand because as you can see the polka dotted ribbon is kind of underneath the blue ribbon and my original thought was to have the polka dotted ribbon be on the top so um, just you know if you're using a patterned ribbon and you want that one to be um, the star or the focus make sure that's on the underside of your um, solid colored ribbon. So once I get it all fluffed out, I'm just going to take that wire, run it through the grapevine wreath, and tie it off in the back. I do go take a piece of smaller um, polka dot ribbon and run it around the middle of the bow to give it more of the bow-like feel. And then once I fluff it out a little bit more on the wreath, then this project is done. Thank you. 
project we're going to take a bunny cut out from Dollar General and I'm just going to cover it with some white Waverly chalk paint. I then go back with my antique wax and I cover the entire bunny with the antique wax to give it the distressed look and then I go back in with some folk art pink chalk paint and I do the ears and just some other accents around his body. Then I took some polka dotted ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I just folded that over, took some white ribbon from the Dollar Tree, tied it in the middle to make this cute little bow tie. I'm going to go ahead and glue the bow tie into the middle of the bunny. Next I'm going to take this little plaque that came from one of the trucks kits that they have at the Dollar General and I'm just going to glue the bunny into uh, the middle of the track of this piece of wood just to give it some stability to stay inside the track. Once I have the bunny glued into the track, I'm going to take some reindeer moss that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue the reindeer moss all around the bottom so that you can't see the wood anymore or the little line that it, the bunny is glued on. This way it looks like the bunny is sitting in the grass. Next I took some Dollar General egg picks and I removed them from the sticks along with their bows that they had glued onto the sticks and then I just glued the eggs next to the bunny into the grass. I did go ahead and glue the eggs into the grass and in like next to each other so that they would have a little bit more stability in the grass. And then once I have the eggs glued on, this project is complete. For this project I took some mason jars that I already had on hand and some Mod Podge from the Dollar Tree and I'm just covering three of these jars with some Mod Podge. Then I'm going to take some uh, Waverly chalk paint, I'm using white, the maize color, and then my pink color is from Folk Art and I just go ahead and cover all three jars with each color of paint. I put the Mod Podge on first so that the paint has something to hold onto and then it sticks better onto the jar. I do go ahead and give each jar about two to three coats of paint just to give it like a solid good color where none of the glass is showing through. Then I take my antique Waverly wax and I go over each of the jars with the wax to give it an antique look. Once I have the antique wax on there, I go ahead and take some twine from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to wrap it around the whole rim of the jar up at the top and there's no rhyme or reason to it, I just start wrapping. It's okay if some of it overlaps together, um, you're just going to go for kind of that full coverage of the top of the rim. I'm ready to add my florals and mine all came from the Dollar Tree. These were just ones I already had on hand from a project from last year. So I put the pink flowers in the pink jar but then I alternate the white ones in the yellow jar and the yellow flowers in the white jar. Once I get them all in there I realize they're still looking a little plain so I take some of that polka dot ribbon, I wrap it around the center of the jar and then I tie a bow with the same polka dot ribbon and glue that in the middle. For the pink jar which is at the middle of the center piece I go ahead and add an extra white bow there and then this project is complete. I'm 
we're going to start out with these um, styrofoam cones that I got at Michael's and some plaid blue fabric that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. So I just start gluing my fabric to the cone and as I'm gluing it to the cone and getting it to stick to my cone I realize I should have cut my fabric in a diagonal. So if you're going to recreate these just make sure before you roll it onto the cone that you cut it in a diagonal shape. Once I have it glued onto the cone, I'm going to take this onion grass and, that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to stick it in the top of the carrot. I decided to go ahead and use two of the onion stems per carrot. Um, I think it gives it a really nice full look. Depending on your preference, you could use one or you could use more and fill it in if you wanted to. Once I have my onion stems in there and I've kind of fanned them out the way I like them, I'm going to take this Spanish moss that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and then I'm going to glue the Spanish moss all around the exposed part of the cone. Another option to glue underneath the grass might be the reindeer moss that they sell at the Dollar Tree. That would also give it a really nice fun look. Once I'm gluing the Spanish moss in, I make sure that it's really full in there so that you can't see any of the cone or the white part showing through. And then once I have that completed, this project is finished. DIY we're going to be using these three little bags that I picked up at Michael's and we're going to stuff them with some batting. I just um, stuffed them all the way till it got to about the green part and then I just cinched them with the ties that were already included in the bag and tied them off with a bow in the front. Next I took this spring sign that I got at the Dollar Tree and I just started painting it with some white Waverly chalk paint. I added in some cashew chalk paint and I just kept blending until I got it to look the uh, color I wanted it to look. Next I took some buttons that I picked up from the Dollar Tree in their colorful button container and then I decided to go ahead and glue those on to the front of the carrots. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the carrots down on the sign first and as you can see at the top I just used those handles that came with the bag to tie the bow um, for the carrot and I think the handles turned out super cute as the bow. Like these were really cute bags. I kind of wish I'd picked up some more. So like I said we're just going to glue them onto the sign and then we're going to take those kind of um, off white colored buttons and we're going to glue them into the center of the carrots. Once I do that, I go ahead and add the twine back at the top of the sign 
for the hanger and then I decided that the sign was looking a tad bit plain so I did decided to take this orange ribbon that I also picked up at Michael's. I just tied a regular shoelace bow, glued it onto the bottom of the sign and then took another button from that button container from the Dollar Tree and glued it into the middle of the ribbon and then this project is complete. For this project I took one of these bunny signs from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to flip it over and make it a shadow box. I start by painting it with the white Waverly chalk paint and then again I add the cashew and the elephant paint to blend it all together until I get the look that I want. Next I'm going to take one of these carrot ornaments that they have at the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to put some Mod Podge on it and I'm using these plain orange napkins. They're kind of a pastel color so um, I was hoping to get like a pastel looking carrot. So I go ahead, paint on my Mod Podge only on the carrot part and then just attach my napkin. And then after I make sure that it's glued on there really good, I'm just going to trim the excess part of the napkin off and um, then I'll put some Mod Podge around the side of the carrot and kind of fold over any kind of edges that might be left. Um, fold them down so that they are just along the side of the carrot. Next I take my celery chalk paint and I paint the top of the carrot for where the greenery would be and I go ahead and give it a couple coats. Next I take this ribbon from Michaels and I just go ahead and Put a stripe of this ribbon in between the orange and the green part of the carrot just to give a little bit of um, added fun to the carrot. Next I take my same button container from the Dollar Tree and I find three orange buttons in there and I'm just going to glue them down to the bottom of the carrot in a little row. Next I take one of those tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue it to the back of the carrot just to give it a 3D dimension look in my shadow box. If you're new to my channel and you're liking today's video, I would love it if you went down and hit that subscribe button and became a part of my YouTube family. Once we have that glued in place, we're going to take some of this uh, same ribbon that we put on the carrot and we're going to make a simple bow on top of the carrot where the hole is 
from the ornament. And all I'm going to do is crisscross the ribbon, glue the pieces down onto the carrot, and then I'm going to fold the top over and glue that onto the two pieces that are already folded there. And that gives me a simple bow. To finish off the bow, I take another one of those buttons from the button container and I glue it into the middle of the bow. I do go ahead and decide to dovetail the ends of this ribbon where I just fold them over and cut at a diagonal to give it a more high-end look. To finish this shadow box, I go ahead and take some more of that ribbon and I just glue a piece on each side of the box. Once my ribbon is on there, I decide to take a few more of the buttons from the button container and glue them to each corner of this shadow box. Once I've done that, then this project is complete. For this DIY, I'm taking one of those Easter signs from the Dollar Tree. Um, I got this one last year and I'm just going to cover it with the white Waverly chalk paint, some agave chalk paint and kind of blend those in together. This sign I picked up at the Dollar Tree this year and I'm just going to do that same process with the white Waverly chalk paint. I go ahead and add in some cashew and then I finish it off with the elephant chalk paint. Once I have the pieces all completely painted, I'm going to go ahead and glue them onto the main Easter sign, the long Easter sign. I really liked this smaller Easter sign. I like the edges of it. For some reason it reminded me of driftwood and so um, I just really like the design. So I go ahead and glue all three pieces onto this main sign. Once I have the pieces glued on, I'm taking these napkins that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm decoupaging them onto these ornaments that I also got at the Dollar Tree. Once I have them glued on there and they have uh, dried a little bit, I go ahead and cut off the excess napkin and then I put some Mod Podge around the sides of it and I fold those down. Next I'm taking the Grogain ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to glue a simple bow at the top of each one of these ornaments. To create the simple bow, I just crisscross the ribbon, I glue it onto the top of the ornament in the middle of where I crisscross them together, and then I fold down the top and glue that to where I glued it already in the middle and that makes a simple bow. I found three matching buttons in the button jar so I go ahead and I glue those to the middle of these ribbons. They were kind of a shiny like metallic color button. They were really pretty and I thought that they kind of gave a really nice accent to the colors that are in the sign. I do go ahead and glue a ribbon at the top of the sign and then this project is complete. Styrofoam 
bunnies from the Dollar Tree. I decided to go ahead and cut this bunny in half, so I'm going to have two pieces. Um, I'm using a paring knife, which actually ends up not being the best knife to use for this styrofoam cutout. It is really, really tight in there, and I have to use a lot of elbow grease to get this cut in half. I shied away from a sharper edge knife just because I didn't want it to tear up the styrofoam, but definitely a sharper knife than this paring knife would be a good choice. So once I get it cut in half, I'm going to take this sign that I got at the Dollar Tree. They have these all the time. They're usually by the checkout. And I'm just going to go ahead and give it one coat of Waverly White chalk paint. Once I have my sign covered, I then go back with my cashew colored chalk paint from Waverly and I just kind of blend it in while the paint is still wet until I get the desired look I'm going for. This sign also had some glitter on the front of it so I just took um, some sandpaper and kind of got all that glitter off before I started painting so make sure you clean it up a little bit before you cover it with something else. I'm going to put some Mod Podge over what I painted and I'm going to use one of these napkins from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to Mod Podge this napkin onto the sign. It does end up taking uh, two napkins because the bottom has to be covered by a separate napkin. So then I take the cutout that I cut in half and I start with the white Waverly chalk paint, then the cashew chalk paint, and then I finish up with the elephant chalk paint. I just kind of blend those in as well because I'm going for a concrete look. So once I'm finished with that, I'm just going to go ahead and add some hot glue to the back of this bunny and I'm going to glue him down on the sign. Just as a note here, I have a really, really hot glue gun and so my, part of my glue gun melted part of the styrofoam of this bunny. So if you're recreating this, make sure you have it on a lower temp. Unfortunately, my glue gun does not have that option. So um, if you have just like a lower temp glue gun, definitely use that on the styrofoam. So then I'm taking this farmhouse ribbon that I got at Dollar Tree, one of my favorites. Um, I try to pick it up whenever I see it. Unfortunately, my Dollar Tree doesn't carry it all that often. So um, when I can get my hands on it, I definitely buy a couple of spools of it. Once I have it tied into the shoelace bow, I'm just going to glue that onto the bunny's neck and then this project is complete. I did go ahead and cover part of the napkin with some white Waverly chalk paint before I glued the bunny down just to give it more of a distressed look. love signs from the Dollar Tree. This is one of those smaller love signs. I'm just going to pop off the galvanized heart and then I'm going to fill in the holes where the hanger was with some spackle from the Dollar Tree. I decided to go ahead and use the front side of the sign because it already has the grooves in there for the shiplap and so I want to go ahead and continue that look so I'm just going to paint over this. I start out using my white Waverly chalk paint and I give it a good uh, coat. I think I give it about two coats actually. I don't let it dry all the way. Um, I'm doing a technique where I'm mixing the paint and so I just start in with the cashew paint like I did in the first project and then I just kind of mix it in until I like uh, how it looks. And then I do add in a tiny bit of the elephant chalk paint and then I go back over it again with all of the colors until I get the desired look that I'm going for. 
through if you're recreating this you're just going to keep on painting until you like how it looks and you feel like it's mixed and completely blended in together so next i'm taking these bunny cutouts that come in a pack of like five or six and they're like the ornaments that you can get and then i'm taking these same napkins and i'm going to use the same technique that i did on the sign i'm just going to cut the napkin into fourths because each square of the napkin can fit over one bunny and so i end up just using like one napkin to fit, to do all three of these bunnies so when i lay the napkin down on the bunny i want to make sure that there is a dark part of the napkin that covers up the hole that's in the top that way you don't have to add anything to cover up the hole and you can't even tell once you get the napkin on there and it's all covered so then we're just going to complete that same those same steps on the next two bunnies once we have all of our bunnies covered and our sign is dry, we're ready to assemble it. And so I just lay out the bunnies on the sign and I kind of play around with them to make sure they're even. I decide to go with the bottom um, shiplap line that is like right above the bunny's tails. So I don't actually measure it with a ruler or anything. I'm just kind of using my eye, but I decided they look the best kind of sitting down there with their tails underneath the line and then the rest of their body above the line. And so once I get them situated the way I like them, I just go ahead and use my hot glue and glue them down onto the sign. So once I get the bunnies glued down, I just take these buttons from the Dollar Tree that I picked up and I'm just going to pick out three that match the napkins as close as possible. I lay the buttons down and then I kind of play with them to see um, how I like them. I just kind of i am trying to go for some uniformity here so I try to make them look as close as they can. Um, sometimes when you buy buttons, you know, you get different sizes, different colors and so I wanted them to match as close as possible. Once I get it the way I like it, then I go ahead and glue each of the buttons down on the middle of the bunny. To complete the sign, I just take some twine that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and I go ahead and glue it to the back of the sign. I go ahead and put some masking tape over it to hold the glue in place better and I just repeat that process on both sides of the sign.
off the jingle all the way and set that aside and then I'm going to start painting it with my white Waverly chalk paint. I did pick this sign up at Christmas time but they do sell this type of sign just about every holiday and they currently have one out for Easter. So I start painting with the white Waverly chalk paint and then I'm just going to add in the cashew paint and the elephant paint and I'm just going to keep blending and mixing until I get to the look I'm going for. start with the eggs and I'm just going to use that same technique with the decoupage so I take the napkin cut it into force and then I'm just going to go ahead and put my Mod Podge on top of the wood egg I then lay the napkin on it and then cut around the egg and then I just smooth it out onto the other side and around the edges so once I have those eggs done I'm going to glue them on into the center of the sign and I go ahead and glue two of them kind of side by side and then I glue one egg on top of them so there is three eggs um, in the middle of the sign. So then we're going to take some Spanish moss and we're just going to lay the Spanish, the, the Spanish moss around the bottom of these eggs. And so I just um, kind of test it out a little bit and then I take my hot glue and I run the hot glue around like the outline of the eggs on the bottom. And then I just kind of um, push down on my Spanish moss and mold it into a nest and I kind of just play around with it adding glue here and there. I even noticed like one side of my nest is a little like lopsided heavy on the left side so I just go ahead and add some more Spanish moss to the right and then when I get the desired look of the nest then I go ahead and stop. to add a little bit of decoration to the top so I'm taking this twine that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to go ahead and glue it to the back of the sign add a little bit of masking tape to hold it on there uh, more securely and then I'm going to wrap it around about three times the top of the sign and then glue it on the other side
last but not least, I'm going to take some of those buttons again that I had gotten from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to go ahead and glue a couple buttons at the top. I kind of play around with it a little bit to see like do I want three buttons or two buttons but I finally decide on just two buttons and I just picked a green and a pink that I kind of felt went with the egg. enjoyed today's video let me know down in the comments which one of these projects was your favorite today as always wherever you are in your journey is a perfect place to start and I will see you guys in the next video so for this DIY I'm going to start out with these treat bags that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and I'm just using some stuffing that I had on hand and I'm going to stuff all the bags and then tie them off with the string that came with the bag. Next I'm getting my beads ready. I have these beads in my stash. They came from Amazon and I'm just going to paint each stick with a different color. I will list down in my description box all the supplies I use for all the DIYs today. So once I have those all painted and drying, I take some burlap from the Dollar Tree and I just cut these into strips. And so then I have everything ready to assemble my garland. So I'm going to start with this piece of twine that came from the Dollar Tree and all I did was measure out my fireplace mantle and just where I was going to hang it there so that it would fit and then I'm ready to assemble. So I'm going to take a bead and then a piece of ribbon and another bead and another ribbon until I have four beads and four pieces of ribbon and then I'm going to take a piece of the burlap and tie it at the end of the group of four beads. After I have the beads and the burlap assembled then I'm going to take one of the bunny bags that I stuffed with the stuffing and then I'm going to glue that next to the burlap. Once I have that completed, I'm just going to continue those steps until I get to either the end of the garland or I've run out of supplies like the bunny bags. Once I have the garland assembled, then this project is complete. For this DIY I took a vase that I got at the Dollar Tree and some of the jute rope from the Dollar Tree. It took me about three packs and I went around the entire vase with the jute rope. Next I took one of those bunny garlands from the Dollar Tree and an old book that I had that actually came from the Dollar Tree as well and I just tore out some pages and I'm tracing around this bunny, this bunny garland around the book pages. Now the bunny's ears are slightly bigger than the page so I just kind of tweaked it as I was uh, tracing around the ears at the top. I cut out six of the book pages and then I'm going to glue two of them each together because I'm going to stick a skewer in between the book pages to give it a pick for the flower arrangement that we're making.
Once I get the skewer in there, I'm real careful as I poke it through there because I don't want it to poke um, any of the book pages. So once I get it into the desired length I want, I do go ahead and take some of my hot glue and glue around the wood pick part to the paper to give it a more um, permanent hold rather than the glue stick. Next I'm going to create the bunny's tails using this twine that I got at the Dollar Tree and they now have colored twine and it's really neat like they have all kinds of different colors purple yellow um, they have solid colors too like just solid purple gray so there's a lot of different choices that you can get in this twine variety so I chose to use the purple and white patterned one to make some tails on each one of my bunny cutouts. To make the tail, I just go ahead and put a daub of the hot glue on my paper and then I start twirling it around the hot glue. I add a little bit of glue here and there, not a whole bunch because I don't want it to come through in the tail until I get the desired size of the circle I want and then I go ahead and trim it and glue it down to the rest of the twine. Next I decide to go around the edges of my bunny cutouts so I go ahead and get some yellow, pink, and blue chalk paint and I just um, lightly go around the edges of the entire cutout in each color. Off camera I did go ahead and put some floral foam into my vase and I went ahead and stuck the bunnies into the floral foam and now I'm ready to just put my florals in and do um, some arranging. These florals came from the Dollar Tree. They were last year's florals from a different project but I'm using some greenery and some lavender and lilacs that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and so I just you know randomly go around and put my picks in till I get the desired look and then this project is complete. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Catherine from A Perfect Place to Start. I love to do seasonal decor, Dollar Tree DIYs, and thrift to treasure. So if that is something that you're into, I would love it if you went down, hit the subscribe button, and became a part of my YouTube family. For this project, I took one of the mason jar signs from last year's 4th of July decor and I just painted the top of it with my elephant chalk paint and then my steel chalk paint to give it kind of a metal look. Then I used some Mod Podge and took one of the calendar pages from the Dollar Tree calendar and applied it to the front of the jar. Once I have the um, calendar page dry, I took some more of that jute rope and I glued it around the um, sides of the project. Then I took some more of that um, patterned twine from the Dollar Tree, this time I'm using the yellow and white one, and I'm just gonna wrap it around the top of the mason jar to give it some texture. 
Now you can do as little or as much of the twine at the top as you want. I kind of feel like I went a little heavy handed with the twine after I was all finished and looked at it, but um, you know, like I said, it's up to you, your preference, how much twine you want to wrap around the top. Next I'm going to add some embellishments to my calendar page. So the bunny has a ribbon around his neck that looks like the farmhouse ribbon from Dollar Tree. So I just go ahead and tie a shoelace bow and attach that to the front of the bunny. Next I took some yellow flowers from the Dollar Tree and again these were left over from last year but they have all kinds of florals out now for spring and summer. I did go ahead and take out the middle part of this flower and then I went ahead and added a green button to the middle. If you've watched me for a while, you know how much I love buttons. This particular button container came from the Dollar Tree. They have some neutral colors and then they have some colored buttons. I use the colored button container a lot. So next I'm going to take some more of my lavender from the Dollar Tree and I just kind of cut it off and stick the twigs down in by the yellow flower to give it some texture around the wreath part. I did finish this project off in the back by cutting out some of the brown paper, wrapping paper that they have at the Dollar Tree and adhering that to the back to give it a more finished look. Once I have all my florals glued on, then this project is complete. I picked up two of these tag signs at the Dollar Tree and I'm just covering the backs of them with my white Waverly chalk paint. I do leave some of the wood showing so that it gives it a distressed look once I have that all painted and I do go ahead and do the sides. I take those poster stickers from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to spell out Easter Bunny. So I start with the middle of my word so that I can make sure that it's even and then I'm going to go ahead and brush over some white Waverly chalk paint on top of the letters so that it gives it also a distressed look and it's not so harsh of a black color. So we're going to set that one aside and work on the other tag and I'm just using this bunny. It was one of those bunny garlands from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut out a reverse stencil. So what I do is I just trace it on there and then I cut out the middle and then I leave some of the paper around it so then the stencil is just the bunny. Once I have that cut out I'm just going to take my elephant chalk paint and I'm going to stencil around onto the sign. I was having a conversation with someone last week and they were talking about how stencils are super hard for them to use and they never go correctly. I have been using stencils for a while and I think that the main part of using a stencil is to start out with a big stencil and then once you've kind of mastered the technique of doing the big stencil to move on to those smaller stencils. Next we're going to glue the bunny onto the Easter bunny sign that we made and I'm just lining up the holes at the top because I want this to look like a tag sign and then I have that hot glued. I'm going to take some of these beads and these were from a previous project that I did in the last video and I'll link that video here so you can see the tutorial. But I just used the leftover beads from my garland and I just strung them on a piece of twine and I'm hot gluing them in the back. I do go ahead and put some tape down in the back to give it more of a secure hold where I glued it down. 
Next I'm going to make a bow for the top of the bunny sign and I'm just going to do one of those crisscross bows and I'm just basically using up some of the supplies that I've had that I'd used in some other videos um, that I'd made and so I just thought this would be a good project to kind of use some of the pieces that were already cut up. So I'm going to take this polka dotted ribbon from the Dollar Tree and then I'm going to take two pieces of burlap that I had left over and then I'm going to take two pieces of this green and white polka dot ribbon that I had left over from my garland. And then I decided to go ahead and add um, some yellow ribbon here just on the top and so I'm just going to cut two strips of that and lay it on top and then use some twine to tie it all together. I like to finish these bows off um, in the middle with a piece of ribbon to make it look more like a bow so I just cut a small piece and then I glue that around the twine part that I tied together to make the bow. I think it gives it a more finished bow look. We're ready to glue this on and when I had it glued on it looked like it was upside down. So I just went ahead and flipped it back around. I am going to go ahead and dovetail all the ends of the ribbon and burlap along with the hanger ends because the hanger is actually going to show because I'm going to use that to hang it on my front door. So I want to make sure that all of it has a finished look and that it's uniform. For one last touch, I'm going to add some of this green polka dotted ribbon to the front of the bunny for a little bow tie, and once I have that on there, this project is complete. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Catherine with The Perfect Place to Start. I love to do seasonal decor, Dollar Tree DIYs, and thrifted treasure. So if that is something that you're into, I would love it if you went down, hit the subscribe button, and became part of my YouTube family. For this project, I'm starting out with a scrap piece of wood from my garage, and I'm just giving it one coat of white Waverly chalk paint. Then I'm going to take these wood eggs that are part of the ornaments from Dollar Tree along with this fabric that also came from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to Mod Podge the fabric onto both sides of the egg. Each egg is going to get a different color. I just go ahead and um, paint the Mod Podge right on and then stick a piece of fabric on both sides of the egg. Next I trim around the egg to get as close to the edge as possible and then I'm going to take some of that jute rope and glue it around the outside of the egg. Next I'm going to take these tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue them to the back of the egg. I glue two of them together so that it gives it kind of like a shelf sitting look when it sits on the piece of wood. I want the egg to hang down just slightly um, because we're going to glue some reindeer moss on here to look like the eggs are sitting in the grass. And I go ahead and do that for all three eggs. Thank you. 
Now that I have them glued on there, I'm just going to take some more hot glue and my reindeer moss and I'm just going to fill it in all around the eggs in the back and in the front and then on the front of the piece of wood. Once I get that glued on, then this project will be complete. For this project, I'm going to use another one of those egg ornaments from the Dollar Tree. I'm just covering it with my white Waverly chalk paint and I only do one coat. Then I take my antique wax and my chippy brush and I distress over the egg. Next, I'm going to take this frame that I picked up at a garage sale. It is from the Dollar Tree. They just had painted it with a pink spray paint. I decided to go ahead and use that um, color that they had sprayed it and I'm not going to do anything to the outside of the frame. Next, I'm going to take this burlap that I also got at the Dollar Tree and and I'm going to wrap it about around the cardboard insert from the frame and glue it to the back of the insert. I did remove the glass from this picture frame because we aren't going to be needing it and I set it aside. Next we're going to place the egg in the middle of the burlap and we're just going to hot glue that down and then we're going to take some more of that polka dotted ribbon, just tie it into a regular shoelace bow and then we're going to tie that at the top of our egg. So I think this project looks adorable just like this. I wanted to try it out with some reindeer moss on the bottom to see if it was sitting in some grass and when I got out the moss to put it on there, I stuck it onto the project and realized I'd bought floral moss instead of reindeer moss and it is quite a bit messier to work with and was stuck to the frame. So I just decided to go ahead and go with it. So I added some hot glue down there and I'm just gluing on the floral moss to the project and making sure that it sticks really good. So double check when you're buying your moss at the store that you're getting the right moss that you are going for. Once I have that completed, I still feel like it's kind of missing something, so I take this sticker pack that I had on hand, pretty sure it came from Hobby Lobby, and there's a couple tags in the sticker pack, so I decided to go ahead and glue the tags underneath the bow to, to make it look like they're hanging off of the egg. The long sticker says Happy Easter, and then the smaller tag is just some flowers. It also has this really cute bunny sticker, and so I decided to go ahead and play around with the bunny sticker, and I stick the bunny sticker down into the ground grass and then this project is complete.
thank you guys for joining me today i hope you enjoyed the projects let me know down in the comments below which one was your favorite today as always wherever you are in your journey is a perfect place to start and i will see you guys in the next video